Here is what it sounds like with just the flutes and horns. And now with everyone in. In this video, I'm going to go into detail of how I arranged You Go To My Head in the Miles Ahead style. I'll cover form, melody and motifs, harmony, and then voicings and orchestration. Then I'll play the arrangement again. The form of You Go To My Head is a traditional AABA, but with an additional 10 bar C section. The added C section is great, as it contains a nice climax and ending to the melody. At this tempo, it's possible for the arrangement to just be once through the head, with an intro and ending, and that is what I ended up doing. Gil did this for My Ship, Lament, and The Meaning of the Blues. In terms of the general structure of my arrangement, for the intro, I used it to build expectation and mystery. I kept the first A relatively simple, with solo trumpet and ensemble backings. In the second A, I had more frequent texture changes, and added an extra bar at the transition. And in the bridge, I had a harmonised ensemble passage for the first four bars, similar to My Ship and Maids of Cadiz. Then a thinner texture for the next four bars, with the trumpet on the melody again. In the third A, there's a trumpet lead over some new textures, as well as an ensemble phrase. For the C section, there's a build up with a full tutti right on the climax. and the ending is similar to the introduction. Due to the nature of the original melody, I've mostly left this to the soloist, just as Gil did throughout most of the Miles Ahead album. I think it's important to have motifs that run throughout an arrangement making sure to give even unimportant parts a link to something else in the arrangement where possible. Here is a collection of ideas and motifs I've used throughout the arrangement. Throughout the introduction, turn around to the bridge, the bridge, C section and ending, I have a pedal note motif. It's just a simple rhythmic adjustment to the root and fifth, but it's enough for our ears to pick up on it. It's usually doubled with the tuba, but in the bridge and C section, just the bass plays it. For the intro, turn around and ending, this motif is accompanied with a simple rhythm in the trombones, which makes it more recognisable again. Rising and falling semitone motif. This is directly borrowed from Gill's arrangement of The Meaning of the Blues. Have a look at this reduction of the A section. The top voice rises by a semitone, almost throughout the entire A, right up to the next A section where it meets the top note of the muted trumpet voicing. In green, I've highlighted a downward semitone movement 
that are utilised several times later in the arrangement. The start of the second A section hints at this descending semitone idea as well. In the second part of the bridge, I hired a falling semitone motive inside the accompanying chords. I wanted to put some sort of hook in this part, as the melody and bass line are static in these four bars. Although it's not particularly original, the falling semitone motif appears a few times in the bass as well, often doubled with the tuba, or tuba and bass clarinet. Gil does this in my ship. Okay, on to the harmony. My main reharmonization techniques were increasing or decreasing the harmonic rhythm, substitution, and new chords I obtained through voice leading. I'll show a few examples of each. If you want to do some in-depth study, the score and reduction is available on my coffee page. Links are in the description. I'll show you a few moments where I added or changed chords for more or less harmonic movement. Contrast is one of the best and simplest compositional tools you have, so increasing or decreasing harmonic rhythm is a way of emphasizing this aspect. In this example, I increase the harmonic rhythm to build momentum into the C section. Here I used a series of descending dominant chords to get to the 2-5 of A-flat. This is a pretty common technique in jazz arranging, and Gil used it too. In the second A, I added more chords for more interest. In these two bars, I added a 6-7 before the 2-7, and a G-flat diminished with an added ninth for a quicker harmonic rhythm. In the ensemble solely section, there is a new chord for each new melody pitch. If you're wondering what I'm up to here, then you'll really enjoy some of my previous videos where I cover this sort of technique in detail. But it was common in ensemble solely moments for Gil to harmonize each note of the melody with a new chord. This helps to make this beautiful ensemble moment stand out. There are a few places where I decrease the rate of harmonic change. At the start of the second A section, I don't change chord to the G minor. This is to let the chord hang and highlight the dramatic texture change. In other places at the start of the C section, where I have the same harmonic rhythm, but I altered the chord to have the same bass note. This makes it seem like there is less movement, and helps to contrast from the build toward the climax. You might be wondering how I changed the original D flat 7 for an A flat minor. Well, they are from the same mode. Chord 4 7 is usually a Lydian dominant, which is the fourth mode of the A flat melodic minor scale. So I just borrowed a chord from the same mode, using chord 1 from the mode rather than chord 4. There's been lots of substitutions in the examples we've seen already, but in these examples, I just did straight substitutions because I wanted a different flavor. For instance, in the climax, I used tritone substitutions to contrast from the surrounding harmonies. This brings a lot of extra excitement to this 2T part. And at the ending of the third A, I replaced chord 1 with a sharp 4 minor 7 flat 5 
to lead into the turnaround into the C-section. I found landing on an E-flat here sounded too resolved, and I wanted the momentum to keep pushing forward onto the end of the piece. Sharp 4 minor 7 flat 5 isn't a direct substitution for chord 1, but it's often used as a 2 chord going into chord 3, which usually starts the turnaround. Now I've shown this technique a bit in my previous harmonising like Gill videos. Sometimes I'll stumble onto a new chord from voice leading alone. I'll show you what I mean. In this first A section, I have the rising semitone accompaniment. In the third bar, I happen to land on a C with what would have usually been a G flat chord. The C then resolve upwards to a D flat. So I tried chords that would work with a C and F in the melody and G flat in the bass. The G flat diminished worked well and the pitches all move nicely to the G flat major chord. I like the tension it adds to this moment. I did something similar for the third A section, except I put the rising part in the bass. A diminished is an inversion of G flat diminished, and it just worked out really well for this section leading up to my ensemble solely part. Thinking of voice leading specifically helped me out a lot in this transition to the bridge. I had added an extra bar and wasn't sure of the harmony that should be used in the trombones. So in the last chord before the bridge, I had all the trombone parts moved by semitone to their destination. The C sharp and F sharp move down and the A moves up to a B flat. I've greyed out the pitches played by other instruments in the bridge. F sharp minor, or sharp 2 minor, is an accord I'd usually think of in this situation, but in this context, with the voice leading, I think it sounds good. As I mentioned in the first video, the instrumentation of the arrangement is solo trumpet, alto sax, flute, alto flute, clarinet, bass clarinet, two French horns, four trumpets, three trombones, tuba and bass. If you're unfamiliar with some of the qualities of these instruments, I recommend having a look at my channel. I've done several videos on specific instruments. For this voicing in the second A section, I borrowed Gill's voicings from The Meaning of the Blues. On top we have a flute, then an alto flute, clarinet, a highish bass clarinet, two French horns helping to blend the chord together, and a nice rounded tuba reinforcing the bass. For those of you interested in how these chords are voiced, I'll talk about this F7 augmented flat 9 in more detail. I have the root in the bottom, and then the 3rd and 7th. Having a solid foundation of root, 3rd and 7th in the lower part of the chord allows you to use all sorts of alterations above. The flute is on the augmented 5th, the alto flute is doubling the 3rd, and the clarinet is on the flat and 9th. The bass clarinet is doubling the 7th. The French horns are invaluable in this type of voicing. The interesting thing about the wind section is that they have all really different timbres, so they won't blend as readily as a section of trombones or strings will. The horns help to glue them all together, as well as glue the tuba to the top part of the voicing. Here it is without the horns. And now with the horns. Another example of this is at the end of the first A section, where the horns are placed between the low brass and the unison flute and clarinet. The horns are in red. Here is what it sounds like without the horns. And with the horns.
Another texture Gill utilizes is low flutes and French horns doubled. This can be as a lead line or as an accompaniment. In the ensemble solely section, I use this idea. This voicing is borrowed from the beautiful ballad, Lament. The top two parts are flute and alto flute, doubled by two French horns. The next two notes below are trombones, and the bass line is doubled by tuba and bass clarinet. Flutes and horns have a beautiful cloudy, glowing quality that is just stunning. Here is what it sounds like with just the flutes and horns. And now with everyone in. I have found that Gil will usually keep an alto sax in the wind section. They can add a nice weight to the winds when needed. In bar 3 and 4 of the bridge, I add the alto sax to the melody. You can hear its tone adds a nice woody edge to the melody line. And now it's time for the playthrough. Thanks for watching. Please leave any questions you have in the comments section. Thanks to the players for recording this for me. What did you think? If you'd like the score or reduction, you can purchase the PDFs from a coffee page.